REDCap is an online data collection tool. A REDCap database or project is essentially just a secure website. You can bookmark the website link or add it to your browser's favorites. And you can use REDCap on any device having internet access, including tablets and smartphones. All projects have this general layout. On the left is the menu, and on the right is the workspace. The project title appears at the top. A project's content depends on your access level. So if your project looks different than this example, read through the instructional text to learn about the quick tasks and other features you have access to. REDCap is designed to be user-friendly. The main area used for data entry is the menu's data collection section. The record status dashboard displays the records that have already been created in colored buttons. Buttons are arranged in columns corresponding to the project's data collection instruments. These are the data entry web pages where you can enter information about any record. They are the same links as used in the menu itself. Notice that these instruments appear underneath the Add Edit Records link. Be mindful that these three instruments are for this example research study. Your own project will use different instrument names and have a different number of web pages used for data entry. On the Add Edit Records page, I can open an existing record by selecting it from a list. Or I can type a key word or phrase and open a record by selecting from the matches. This page is also the only place where I can add a new record. In many projects, adding a record simply means clicking a button. But if you see something different here, such as a place to type in a new record name or number, then follow the built-in prompts and instructional text to add a new record. In this example, REDCap assigns a sequential number to each new record and displays that at the top of the record home page. Your project may call the record ID something different. REDCap can store almost any type of data, so it's used for many purposes. Always carefully read through any special instructions you see on your record home page or elsewhere in REDCap. To begin data entry, click any colored button. Notice that they are all gray by default, indicating that no data has yet been saved. Let's begin on the first instrument. This page is the data collection instrument. It's also called a data entry form. Notice that it corresponds to the first instrument name in the menu. On the instrument, the questions or descriptive text usually appear on the left, and data entry fields appear on the right. The questions in your project reflect your particular work. There are several different question types used on REDCap instruments. Most are pretty self-explanatory. Over the next several minutes, we will explore examples of the most common question types that you might encounter. This form starts with text and notes boxes. You can type in answers or use copy-paste. You can also use the tab key to move to the next field. A green highlight indicates where the cursor is. There may be additional text underneath a field. That text is called a field note and will remind you of any additional instructions related to a particular question. Some text fields require a specific type of formatting. This is called validation. The next few text boxes are validated to ensure I enter the correct format for each. Notice that REDCap automatically reformats certain data. And if I make a mistake, REDCap will display an alert. Validation is a way to ensure that data is saved in a consistent format, and most projects use this functionality. Notice that when I entered a date here, the next question was automatically completed. This is a calculated field. These fields look like text boxes, but they have red font, which cannot be changed. These fields complete automatically when you have entered the other data used in their predefined equation.
Multiple choice fields are commonly used on data collection instruments. Depending on how the project was created, you might be able to type a word or phrase into the field to select your answer from a long list. You might also have checkboxes where more than one answer can be selected. You can almost always edit data in REDCap. Follow your study's procedures to select the correct form status answer. And remember, you can always leave it as the default incomplete and change it later. There is no auto save in REDCap, so save early and save often. There are several save options at the bottom of the instrument and in a floating menu. Each option has slightly different functionality, so select whichever one applies for your particular situation. Again, you might see even more options here, and your study procedures should provide guidance about which option is best for your data entry workflow. Let's save the record and move to the next form. Notice that I am now on the second data collection instrument, but the same record is open. I can now enter more data about this record. As I enter data, I'll get more validation reminders if I enter anything in the wrong format or outside of the expected range. Notice that whenever there is a range validation, I can save values outside the expected minimum and maximum. This value is displayed in bold and highlighted in red to illustrate that it falls outside the expected range, which was predefined for this field. Let's select a form status and save. Notice that when a record is open, the record ID and colored form status buttons appear in the data collection section. Clicking the record ID link takes you back to the record home page. The colored buttons can be used to navigate directly to other instruments. The record name or number is also always displayed at the top of the instrument. This project has additional customizations so that the participant's name appears at the top of the forms too. At the bottom, I can erase all the answers on this page, which includes the form status. This is a helpful feature if you need to totally start over with data entry for this particular record and instrument. The record homepage now reflects the color-coded form status on each instrument. This is also illustrated on the dashboard. Clicking any button opens the record on that particular instrument, allowing me to resume data entry. Remember, the form status is a quick reference color coding feature. It does not correspond to how many questions are truly answered on the form. And that's why I can save using the complete option, even though some fields are now blank. After a record has been saved at least once, the record home page may display additional options. These depend on your user permissions, so your view might include options for data access groups or record locking. Remember to check your study procedures to see which options apply to your work. If I want to continue data entry by creating a new record, I must go back to the Add Edit Records page and repeat the process. But now that we have explored how to enter data in a typical Red Cat project, let's briefly look at another example project, which illustrates a few additional data entry features. The My Projects page has a list of all the projects I have access to. I've organized my projects using color-coded folders, but I will search by keyword to find the project I want to open. Here, I'm tracking information about grants in my department using several instruments. My permissions are different here, so the project homepage has fewer options than the first example but I can see that several records have already been entered in this project. Just as before, the dashboard illustrates the existing records. And I can still use the Add Edit Records page to open a record or to create a new record, corresponding to a new grant. Notice that I have a text box to type in the new project nickname. As I type, records matching what I'm typing will appear. If I select or type in a nickname that's already been used, that record will open. Record IDs must be unique and cannot be duplicated, 
So this is an existing record instead of a new one. Only when a new nickname is entered will a new record be created. Data entry proceeds much like in the first example. It looks like this one is already opened and being edited by another project user. So even though I should be able to edit the data here, those capabilities are temporarily disabled. I have to wait until the person currently on this form is done. Once they've left this form, I can use it. Let's refresh the page and see if the other user is done yet. Yes, they are. So now I can make changes here. Let's say I need to change the first answer to no. Because other fields on this form are based on this answer using branching logic, REDCap displays a warning asking me if I want to erase all that existing data. In this example, I am being told that if I change the answer to no, other questions, which have already been answered, will be hidden on the page. That will erase their current values meaning that their original answers will be lost. It's crucial to read through all such prompts and alerts and understand them fully before proceeding. If you aren't sure what to do, choose to leave the field and data alone and contact your study team for guidance. Let's explore two final features that you may encounter during data entry. Longitudinal projects capture the same data multiple times. This is one of the most advanced project types in REDCap. In a longitudinal project, the instrument list usually isn't displayed in the project menu. And there are often new features on both the dashboard and add edit records page. The dashboard page is organized by tabs, which correspond to the project's longitudinal arms. Notice how in this example, different arms use different events and instruments, as well as special record naming conventions. The Add Edit Records page similarly displays the records of each arm separately. To open an existing record, I must first select its arm. To create a new record, I must also first select the arm. The record home page is then displayed. Let's use the floating save options to move quickly through the remaining instruments that apply to this particular record on this specific longitudinal event. Notice that in longitudinal projects, both the event name and record ID are displayed in the menu and at the top of the page during data entry. Now that we've saved some data, the record home page has some new options to delete data based on an entire longitudinal event. Be mindful that longitudinal data entry is more complex than working in a traditional or classic REDCap project. If your project uses the longitudinal module, carefully read through any prompts or pop-ups to learn about your data entry workflow. In both longitudinal and classic projects, you might encounter one of the most advanced data entry features, repeating instruments or events. This feature allows an instrument or longitudinal event to be completed an infinite number of times for any given record. The adverse events instrument in this record has been for the current record or event. The top of the instrument and the menu reflect this using the instance number. I can complete the form repeatedly to document new adverse events for this record. If your project uses this feature, then you'll also see a new drop-down field at the top of the instrument to move between different instances. This navigation button is a quick way to move between and edit instances. The record home page now reflects the new instances of this form. There is no limit to the number of instances, so if your project uses this feature for any particular data collection instruments, you'll be able to save an unlimited number of those forms for each record. One final note about this advanced feature. When on an instance, the delete option at the bottom will simply erase this particular instance, leaving all other instances alone. 
Notice that after deleting this instance, the Record Home page updates accordingly.